Hello and welcome. I am Gohar Raza and you are watching Eureka. 200 million people get affected by malaria every year across the globe. Africa and Asia are worst hit areas. Some people argue that developed countries and corporate sectors are not really interested in malaria research because it's poor man's disease. However, over last one century, our understanding of how malarial parasite cycle operates has grown tremendously. And today, we are at a stage where we are looking at malarial parasite at molecular level. It's important to do basic research in order to control such diseases. And for our country, it's extremely important across the world, about 1 million people die of malaria every year. And today we have a special guest to once again discuss malarial cycle. Welcome, Dr. Pushkar Sharma. Thank you very much. To both Rajya Sabha channel and Eureka program. I'm extremely thankful that you could find time from your very busy schedule to, to come to the studio. Pleasure is entirely mine. When did you get interested in uh, malarial parasite? So, uh, if you may, Your background is from chemistry. If, if so, you may, a person doing chemistry, getting into malarial parasite cycle is a far-fetched thing. If you may allow me to backtrack a bit. So, you're absolutely right. I mean, I did my master's in chemistry and from there, when I went to do my PhD at All India Institute, I got interested in something which, which had to do with chemistry where I was synthesizing peptides and trying to understand the structure function of these peptides. So when I was looking for uh, a postdoctoral position, I was lucky to get an offer from a laboratory in the US who were looking at enzymes involved in neuronal function. I, during the course of a PhD, I had in, developed interest in enzymes and this enzyme uh, was known as cyclic dependent kinase 5. As the name suggests, it's a protein kinases and by definition, protein kinases are involved in signaling. So I decided to join this lab, which was at the NIH. And, and that, start, that was beginning uh, of my interest in signaling. While I was trying to understand the structure function using uh, different biophysical techniques of this enzyme, which had turned out to be an important design for neuronal function. Will I be uh, right if I say that you broke the uh, straight jacket walls of disciplines from chemistry to biology? Uh, I will, uh, yes, there was a, definitely a transition, but in modern times it is actually easy because science is, it cannot be categorized by subjects and it is uh, These the, boundaries are becoming yeah, thinner and yeah. thinner. They, 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 they're being and shattered every, every day by most individuals who, who wish to do that. So coming back to, so that is where, so the, the uh, ulterior object, one of the objectives of going to this lab was to understand cellular signaling while I continue to do uh, the structure function work. Before we come yeah. to, 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 yeah. to, to your research, right. uh, was it something that uh, was triggered from Bareilly because Bareilly was an area which was at one point of time really infested with malarial uh, parasites. Uh, I would. Uh, you the, grew up in a. I, I grew up in Bareilly and, and I loved it dearly. And I mean, I can go on and on about it. But uh, uh, the interest in malaria was not because of Bareilly. Uh, uh, Bareilly because. Uh, what about an interest in science? Uh, yeah, interest, Were you interested in science yes. right from the beginning because your father was a physics expert? Yeah, so I. Uh, you're right, my father and my uh, grandfather and, and they were academicians, so there was an academic atmosphere at home and also my father used to wake me up in the morning 4.30 to study, so that's why I'll, I'll always be an early riser. Uh, my mother, and the, actually it also coincided with my mother doing the, uh, the riyas on the harmonium and I still, uh, those tunes I mean, you know, in my, are in my head, I guess once you uh, think, get to hear things in the childhood, they are there for, for your life. But I was very much interested in sports in Bareilly, the, uh, the facilities were not, this thing was the, the, like any other in, uh, Indian town. You could play cricket, and I did that. 
but uh, uh, as when I went to Ames, I got all these facilities and I got actually an, an ardent badminton player which I continue to be till date. What are the memories of this historical place where you did your masters? The Bareilly College, uh, 1857, a lot of people, personalities participated in, in the revolt from Bareilly I'm College. I am so happy uh, Dr. Raza that you brought this point. I do not have that much uh, knowledge about the history except it was made by British and there was lots of uh, freedom movement. Uh, I mean, it uh, took off from there and, and so on and so forth. But for me, as, as I told you, my <laughs> grandfather, my father, they all, uh, they, they, the faculty, my father was also a student before he became faculty. And he also has a, had opportunities to be in the administrative services, which he did not because he had a job at Bareilly College. He decided to do that. And, and he had a great life uh, <laughs> in Bareilly. So, so and I, you also I, wanted to become a teacher uh, there. You know what, because I was so... Uh, it was such a nice place and if you've been there too, you probably realize and I, I got as a child uh, this thing and when I was a student I got some very good teachers there and uh, and so I, I it was difficult to I guess I was trying to be a bit romantic trying to stick to that same place but uh, then obviously that didn't happen but probably I would have been happy I mean if I was I was there <laughs> I have to take a break don't go anywhere we'll come back very soon Welcome back. We were discussing, Dr. Sharma, your interest in science grew as you grew uh, in the college and when you came to All India Institute of Medical Sciences, it was really crystallized. But your interest in malaria and malarial cycle grew when you went abroad. Uh, it is irony that uh, a disease which hits us very badly, your, interview, uh, your interest grows in that disease when you are in your United States. So, if I may. So, like I was uh, telling you earlier, I was studying these signaling pathways in neurons. So, that, is what, that was my interest and that is the central interest of my laboratory. But when I was planning to move back to India, like any other person was trying to, I was applying for jobs. So one of the first job offers made to me was with ICGB, and one of their interests was malaria. Uh, so, I, so because I, I had developed... So it's only a coincidence. You are basically interested in signaling uh, at, at molecular level. Right. And with that expertise, you come back to India, and it is because in India there is this institute which offers you the opportunity that you shifted to malaria. I think it, that helped me crystallize my interest which was already developing and the reason for that was when I was, uh, I mean, uh, when I was just finishing my postdoc, I was trying to think of problems which I want to work on. The, the, the information from the malarial genome sequence which was made, being made public was rapidly coming fast and it was, uh, was be, be, being made available. So what I saw in the genome was a lot of goodies for someone who's interested in signaling. Was it fashion? Uh, Just because it was new knowledge and, and you were attracted no, towards so it? The, the interest was because a lot of molecules of my interest, such as molecules involved in signaling, such as protein kinases, phosphatases, they were conserved. They seemed to be present in the, in the genome of, of the malaria parasite. And, and, but the information about that, how they operate, how they regulate the, cell, uh, the life cycle of the parasite was was not uh, known uh, for, for most of these. So that was the exciting uh, bit and I thought with my some experience in signaling and obviously interest, I can make contribute to understanding uh, of signaling in this fascinating organism plasmodium. What is this signaling? Can, so, can, can you explain so it a little bit? In layman's bit? terms, so, so you have these messages which are encoded in these signals. They arrive at the cell surface and at the cell surface they are received by cell surface receptors. So it knocks on the doors and the receptor receives this, these signals and the signal from these receptors is transmitted to the various compartment of the cells. That depends of course what the signal is and, and, and what cell are we talking about and, and, and this information, it is transmitted to the, like I said to the different organisms or different compa cellular compartments is done by, a pro, uh, by putting into action the biochemical processes uh, in that given cell. Now it can, uh, and, uh, signaling is involved in almost every process involved in the cells. It could be transcription of genes, it could be modulation of cytoskeleton and so on and so forth. So, uh, uh, so, so that, is, that, that, is, that is signaling. So my interest was 
to understand how these biochemical process or, or my interest is how these biochemical processes are regulated in response to a signal at a, at a molecular level. Uh, I wanted to ask you that malarial parasite or malaria itself is one of the diseases that is known to human beings uh, during antiquities and it has persisted over a period of time. We knew a lot about it, but why is it necessary to go to molecular level to understand it? A lot of diseases have been overcome and very effective uh, medicines have been uh, developed for them without getting into that, uh, that, that level of research. So, so why does it evade so, us? So, so the, I mean this is my personal opinion and there could be more than one opinion about it. Let us say, take the example of malaria. As you rightly said, the big corporates, developed countries, they are not in, interested, I mean they are less interested compared to other things and rightly so because they have other problems to deal with malaria. But they were interested in making a vaccine drug because that is where the glory lies because if you cure the disease and, and naturally that is that has to be the ulterior objective of anyone working in health science. But the problem occurs is that when things do not go this thing, as you know, there is no successful malarial vaccine. Correct. There, there, is, there are drugs. That is the question. Th 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 there are asking. drugs to which the parasite becomes resistance. Of course, there are a uh, uh, drug for which a Nobel Prize, Artemis, which has been given recent in this year, in the past year. Uh, this thing, they have con helped control malaria significantly. But the problem occurs why you do not have a vaccine, why you have resistance. So, if you understand the fundamental principles by which the, the parasite uh, development is being guided and let us say you have a drug and you understand the mechanism by which this drug is, is able to cult curtail the, the parasite, uh, parasite proliferation, when you have a problem of, of resistance, you probably are bound to overcome it more. Similar uh, thing with, with the vaccines, I mean of course I mean uh, uh, in science failures te uh, teach you sometimes as much as the uh, successes do, but, uh, but, but, but the thing is that the understanding of the molecular details help you address these issues uh, in a more, they may take time in a more efficient way uh, and that is why I think it is important to do this thing. But I will, I will be honest in saying that uh, I, my interest is disease or no disease is interest in, uh, interested in understanding how these molecules dance and make the cell dance to its tune and, 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 and that is why I mean that is what I love doing. And how it evades. If, exactly. Uh, the, the, any intervention from human beings. Yes, so when I say resistance, when you drug resistance, how does uh, this thing. For instance. Uh, for there are five types of malarial parasites, right? And each one of them has evaded uh, uh, so, uh, the, so there are many, the vaccination. The, the many, the ones, uh, major ones for the humans are for Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax and you are right. I mean for, for either of these we do not have. And they change shape very fast within the body and that is why immune system cannot react probably. Uh, it is, it is it's a vast area, it is multifactorial. Yes, we can, I can say the parasite is uh, uh, as a lot of people like to call is smarter than uh, than the host or, or, or us humans <laughs> yeah. and it, 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 it knows how to evolve. I mean there are there could be genetic reasons or there could be uh, other reasons the nature of this life cycle is such that it, uh, it is evaded. But I think uh, uh, I mean uh, let us not lose hope. I mean in coming time there are some very bright people working on the problem and we should have a vaccine. If it does not happen does not discourage. I think it, uh, there are some interesting signs already. Uh, and um, let's hope. I mean, for the uh, the parasite goes into liver, right, and uh, uh, sits there for some time, develops itself, and then attacks RBCs, the red bl blood corpuscles. What is the mechanism that you have been working on, uh, which which will help us uh, develop some vaccines at some later stage, as you are saying? So uh, I think you. I I would say I do not mean. The first for me will lead to a vaccine. I don't work on vaccines. I have the effort of many people who are interested in the area. Yeah. Uh, at the outset, I would like to, uh, I, I had mentioned that I am not interested in vaccines and, and, and drugs. However, and if you find a mechanism or, or a signaling path, pathway or a cascade which has a very pivotal role in guiding critical parasite processes, naturally they can be uh, uh, they can become useful for, for intervention. Now, having mentioned that, I will give you a couple of examples where not 
as per se, but others also have realized uh, uh, um, that it could be in, important for develop, drug development. Uh, and, uh, and since they say that, I mean, I, I believe it. So one of the things which we have done is we have looked at how calcium, which is very important for any cell, uh, uh, signaling process of any cell, is basically regulates the process of host cell invasion. So what happens, it is very interesting that parasite uses, uh, parasite has calcium stores and it has to use it very judiciously. And because, because once it is in the RBC, for the entire life cycle, it has to be sufficient for it. Right. So, so once this calcium is released from these stores, it, it regulates several signaling pathways and it regulates several enzymes which are dependent on calcium because calcium binds to them, modulates their function and then these enzymes, I have to be more specific, the enzymes I am interested in is protein kinases, they go and, and put phosphates on critical parasite proteins, change the function and once the function is changed, uh, 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 when the function is, is appropriate. Uh, 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 or, or, the, or, the, uh, or, or the molecule is in the, in the right form uh, 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 after phosphorylation, it goes and, 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 and helps in the process such as host cell invasion. So one of the things which we have done is, uh, is identified calcium signaling pathways which, are, which, are, which play a role in host cell invasion and we continue to do that. Uh, yeah, and sorry. this is cutting edge uh, kind of, you, you are, your institute is working along with best of the international experts. I have to take a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back. Welcome back, uh, Dr. Sharma. We were at a very critical stage of the debate that malaria cannot be probably eradicated unless we understand the mechanisms and especially the kind of research that you are doing, which is uh, signaling. Uh, unless and until we intervene as human beings and experts at that level, for that high-end research is necessary and, and we need a lot of money for that kind of research. Uh, do you think in India we have sufficient funds and sufficient expertise that new generation can be trained to do research and find solutions to these very complex problems? Yes, uh, the, the scientific research has to become, in my opinion, uh, part of the, the discourse, uh, uh, general discourse in this country. I mean, I'll give you a very small ex example if you may allow. So when I was a postdoc at at the time, it was a time when human genome was being this thing and there was a big fight between the public and the private funding coming from the Human Genome Institute and Craig Venter. Bill Clinton had to intervene and he came out, there's a famous picture with uh, Venter on one side and, and Francis Collins, the director, on the other side and, you know, and, and that, uh, you know, which was basically uh, part of peacemaking and, you know, and the human genome was unraveled and, and then both parties were given equal credit. What I'm trying to say is that is how the mainstream science was and, and you know, people uh, talked about it at that time, I mean even people who had nothing to do with science so on and so forth. So it will be a dream if that kind of situation happens in the country and of, of course it happens once in a while, it has to be more frequent. Now uh, coming to the point of making more institutions, my point is that, and this, and this is personal opinion, we should try to solidify what, with, uh, uh, what we already have, strengthen the arms of already existing institutions. I think. I'm talking about purely from the biological research point of view, and uh, and uh, which would mean more funds or more independence or more uh, expertise. Uh, I, I would say all of them, <laughs> but uh, uh, funds and with as uh, you know that where exactly do we lack as 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 a young scientist? How do you look at it? So we should evolve with times, and these days modern research evolves. Uh, th uh, this thing, we have to make it very attractive for people from who and make it more attractive for, for students. So we have to have more and uh, more brighter students come and do scientific research. As you know, I mean, a lot of bright students, at least the time I was a student, they would go either to do engineering or uh, to medical. Uh, or or medical. And, 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 and then after or that. Or IIM. And after doing engineering, they become bankers and, and brilliant people. They were, so they got the big bucks. Uh, we did not do research. So what's the reason for that? Is it the perks? 
Is it the facility? Is it the sense of security? We have to answer those questions. But and somebody may argue that all the scientists that have made a mark, they have never been after after uh, money. Yes, that's right? true. That's true. They they've been after knowledge. Absolutely. They have asked certain questions. They have spent their life seeking answer to those questions. So it's not the money that attracts mm -hmm. the brightest of the minds. So, absolutely. I mean, uh, I used to say till some time back, if you're interested in in money, probably after a while you may not find it is such a satisfying this thing. But if you have the right balance of passion and you know, of course, make a good living for yourself, then then it's probably all right. But times have changed uh, this thing. But my point is, if it is because of the money's sake, people, uh, uh, the white students are not joining, we can address those problems. Likewise, uh, 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 in recent times, there's a lot of Indians, bright Indians who are coming back to the country and, 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 and you know, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, occupy positions in good institutes and that's definitely contributed to the improvement of uh, biological research in the country. We have to make it even more, uh, more attractive. Having said that, we should also be, because I think given uh, our economy and, and so I think we still do all right job in, uh, in funding institutes, we should also become more accountable. Accountable, it should be a two-way process. It cannot be just uh, this, thing. Uh, this thing. So we have, if we have more funds, then surely uh, uh, the accountability question should, should go high. And that is exactly what I was trying to are say. Are you saying we are not really accountable? No. Or it should improve? What I'm trying to say, I cannot expect I can get 10 times more funds, but my accountability is the same. I just cannot have a, a comfort zone built around myself and say, okay, uh, you know, uh, this thing. So it has to be, and that will make it competitive. And, and that will also make uh, good people, you know, because they, are, they uh, I mean, you know, uh, fight it out uh, with, with people who are in, in a comfort zone. And, you know, and, and, and I think in the end, what will flourish is good science. And good science always flourishes. In the, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's maybe, it may be a matter of time, but it, it right. does. Right? You have been awarded uh, and your work has been recognized both by, by the nation and the scientific community across the world. You have very large number of publications and I'm sure as a scientist you are perfectly satisfied. Did you feel ever a moment of Eureka in your life? So, uh, with due respect, I will, this is the question I was dreading. Uh, awards, <laughs> they, they, and I, they happen on the way, but uh, I mean, after getting an award, I may sound like a hypocrite that I'm not interested in it. Uh, to the extent it's, it's, uh, that you, you like getting appreciated and, and even with the award. Somebody or, is uh, watching, somebody with, is with, interested. With a, award or without award, if, if people who, who have knowledge of your work, it's the one and it's not for you. Actually, you are probably the face, but it is the people, the people who, uh, who trained you, the people who are working day and night uh, uh, in, in, in your group, which is the students. And, uh, and I was, uh, I've been very lucky to have some very good ones, especially I will, if you may allow to make a special mention of one, uh, my first student, I think he was, he, he, he made whatever, if, if I've done anything good, which was Ankush Vaid, then the reason I take his name, because he's no more, he died at a very young age. So, so I, every, almost every day. What was his name? Ankush Vaid. Ankush. Yeah, and, and, and so, and, and followed by several other good students, and 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 and, and uh, so so if at all we do this thing, it is it, it is their efforts, and uh, awards happen on the way. It's all right if they don't happen. It's, it's okay. The, only the bad side of awards is, I, I, in my opinion, is there are always some people who don't get, and actually they may have done better than those who get the award. So 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 uh, you as colleagues and uh, as friends, uh, I mean yeah, I mean uh, you realize Science it. is. Uh, is an activity which is a team activity today. Absolutely, absolutely. And in order to do good science, you have to have peers as well as team members who can contribute absolutely. positively. The environment uh, of, of the institution, the environment of the lab, the collaborators, I mean, no more science can be done in isolation, I can say that. And it, it, it's, it's so at such effect. young age, you are giving credit to your students. Oh, no, no, it's no, very no. heartening. It's, it's heartfelt, I'm telling you. I mean, I'm. I'm I'm considered a kind of a hard task master, but it is from the bottom of my heart. Whatever little I, I, I will, will do is because of my students or whatever I have done. Good. I mean, I'm ready to take all the blames. <laughs> Would you like to sign off by giving a message to the younger generation? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, if you want to be in, it's, it's a great business to be in. And, and uh, if you're passionate, I mean, I mean and you will realize uh, within a year of getting into research that you are passionate or not. I mean, uh, uh, and 
then only come into this profession. It's a great profession and there are some very, very bright people who probably are shying away. They should come into the profession, take a dip and see, they, they'll enjoy themselves. Don't shy away from science. That is the message we take back home No, today. no, they don't shy away from science, but, you know, just taking, you know, you know. The uh, challenge. Exactly, you know. Yeah. You have to take a challenge. And some very, very good life. ones, you know, yeah. And then you can do yeah. good in science Absolute. and Absolute. contribute to the development of the country and humanity both. May I, on your behalf, promise our viewers that you will be happy to answer questions if they have any? To the best of my ability. <laughs> Do write to us if you have any question, comment. Our email address is eurekarstv at gmail.com. We'll be back next week with another as outstanding scientist as Dr. Pushkar Sharma is. Thank you very much Thanks very for much. joining us.